Right. Uh, how's things for you anyway? <laughs> it's going to be one of those. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. How are you anyway? You okay? Oh, good, man. You? Yeah, yeah, good. All right. Um, good. growing up, what music um, did you uh, uh, did you grow up listening to? My dog's throwing me at the moment. <laughs> what music did I grow up listening to? Uh, yeah. Um. My dad's very into music as well, so I listen to a lot of the stuff that he introduced me to. Um, a lot of like early like alternative rock stuff, shoegaze, like Ride, um, Jesus Mary Tree, My Buddy Valentine. Um, like on my birthdays, he'd buy me kind of obscure like rock CDs and things like Swerve Driver and that. But then uh, like high school, I got into Rage Against the Machine. That was a big one, you know, yeah. big, big riffs. Uh, that probably veered me into heavy metal and that, but it was a lot of like shoegaze, alternative rock kind of stuff to start with. Mm. Oh, it's uh, I, I was a big uh, rage, a big rage against the machine fan myself. And yeah, uh, the I, the only thing which put me off, um, I, I went to see them when they first came over to the UK, they played oh, yeah. um, Wembley, uh, uh Arena. And uh, they were only on for 50 minutes. And I'd say about 20 minutes of that was them re messing around, retuning their guitars. And I was like, we had about 20, 25 minutes of uh, Rage Against Machine music. But oh, really? Yeah. It was that. Oh, good God. Going back years now, um, when they first uh, came on the scene. Ah. Uh, God, I can't remember now. Got to be, well, I wouldn't like to say, to be honest. It was uh, trying to think now. No, no. I wouldn't like to say. It was uh, going back many, many years. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds cool, though, apart from the tuning issues and that. I've, yeah, I've yet to see him. But... They, they, because of his effects on his guitar, All he kept... Right, yeah. he kept Tom Morella just kept changing it and it was like, get on with it, get on with the songs. Like, but what um, influenced you in uh, becoming uh, a musician and how did all you guys meet? Um, regarding becoming a musician, uh, I don't really think I had a choice, just like my whole family being so into music. It was, it was just inevitable, really. My dad plays guitar. Uh, me just being interested in music and then gradually like finding more bands I liked it was just inevitable really yeah um, but then like I had a couple of friends in high school that were also into Rage Against the Machine who were like so big into it um, into Guitar Hero as well at the same time so that like thing be having friends in high school who also liked the same music and we all started playing music together that kind of probably started the musician thing um, but then regarding uh, how did we all meet the, in the band currently, yeah? Is that yeah. Second? So I met Ryan um, probably eight or so years ago now. He was playing in another band in like the local lead scene. And um, then when Cryptic Shift got um, started, he um, asked him to play drums and he was up for it. Then everyone else who's currently in the band was uh, from other bands that we also played with. So we had a couple of guitarists um, to start with, Henry Parker and then Joe Bradley. But now we've got Joss Farrington. He was from a band called Separation from Bristol, who were right. very, very, very good. It's like thrash metal stuff. And then John Riley was on bass. He was in a band called Exiled, They're from, from, originally from Liverpool. So we just played with those bands like a bunch of times, and uh, as as the opportunity came up, it was like, right, we you know we're good mates. You're a great, great musician, so we'd like you to join Cryptic, and that, that's how it is now. You um uh, you released Visitations in May two thousand and twenty. Um, was it difficult releasing the album during the pandemic? Did you find it difficult promoting it? 
And uh... um, no, not really, because it was right at the start of the pandemic. Everyone was sort of still up for. Everyone thought it was going to be ending pretty soon, probably the pandemic, yeah. which obviously didn't happen. But everyone was still like listening to a lot of music, you know, at home. So I'd I'd say it worked to our advantage a bit. Uh, when we were first talking with Blood Harvest to release the record, there was no pandemic. You know, it was all going smoothly, and then yeah. unfortunately, it looked like yeah, it was going to be it was going to be released in the pandemic, and we had to like cancel like a a little tour around like the UK. Yeah, which we just done a couple of weeks ago. So that was kind of a bummer, but honestly, I think it worked in our favour with everyone being able to listen to it at home, you know, having much more time and all that. Yeah. So um, did you did you feel like once um, the tours all stopped because of uh, COVID, did you, was there any plans to um, get back writing new material or maybe going down the same route as where the band's done and do like a live uh live stream sort of concert um on the writing uh side writing's kind of always going on yeah. uh, because it's all part of like this like sci-fi story so it's all really interlinked in that yeah but uh, recently um in the last few months we've really started trying to pick that writing up um going forward but the the live stream kind of thing we did it with um me, Ryan and John were in another yeah. band, Slime Lord, and we did a live stream thing for that. But we felt for Cryptic it would be a little less appropriate because um with the album being like quite like a, a slow burner, like really atmospheric kind of thing that you can sit down and like really absorb yourself into. We thought waiting for the live performance would be like the the best um best experience for that. And we had like a lot of new fans. With visitation, so we yeah. wanted the, the you know the first impression to be the live performance. You, you have to excuse me, my dog is. Uh, <laughs> I had to go and put the the phone on charge, and uh, he wants to join in. But um, <laughs> this interview is <laughs> gone nuts. Um, you recently played Cardiff, and I'm absolutely gutted I couldn't make it. I I weren't too well, and uh, I I told uh, Andy that uh, I couldn't I really couldn't make it. I didn't want to go down there because I didn't know um, if I had COVID or not. I didn't want to risk anything, and uh, so I'm gutted I missed you. But how how was the reception in uh, in Cardiff? Did uh, did the fans um, embrace you? Was this the first time you've played South Wales? We've played Fuel in Cardiff once before. Yeah. At Eradication Fest. Yeah. I can't remember what year it was, but uh, and then we played another place. I uh, can't remember the name. But um, it was it was like one of the first shows we've done, one of the only shows in uh, Wales we've done. But the reception was great. There were a bunch of people came down and knew the record and were yeah with like air guitar and a long head banging like you know me being like the singer out having my eyes out in every room it was cool to see a bunch of people like knowing what riffs coming up next and like really enjoying it yeah and um yeah merch merch table did really well a lot of people who were really big fans of the records so that was great so have you got um have you got any other plans to um keep the tour going or are you um thinking about other things at the moment uh well we've got a european tour booked with bedsaw that's been rescheduled for next may time so hopefully europe's ready for that and that can all go ahead yeah um regarding like uk dates uh we've just done this one so we're gonna wait a little while but probably to start next year we'll uh hit some more dates around the uk again no oh, excellent um with uh, with visitations coming out uh, last year, have you started um, planning for the new for a new album, or are you waiting uh, for a bit before you um, release anything new? Yeah, like I said, we're we're writing for it. Um, 
with the with the sci-fi adventure story that the music follows it's always been like kind of set out and planned in like skeleton form but the writing's really starting to pick up now um with the with the pandemic and that um we have kind of been in a bit of like a, a limbo I feel like when can we get started like touring visitations and and yeah. the weird thing is like the, the tour cycle for visitations kind of starts now you know playing yeah. that around the UK and then next year hopefully playing it through to Europe so that it's kind of like a weird weird concept you know releasing an album a, a year yeah. and a bit ago you know and only having a chance to do it now so yeah. we'll probably still be playing visitations around for a while yeah it's um it is a very strange situation ain't it that um many artists have released an album back in 2020 and only now they get in to actually play uh the songs for the fans in the live yeah, capacity mad. yeah and i'm glad it was at the start of the pandemic because if you're a band putting out an album right now there's there's no vinyl available all the pressing plants are just backed up till next year well funny you should say that um i purchased well pre-ordered a vinyl from uh, an 80s band well late 70s early 80s and uh, i keep asking i'm like oh is there any news on the vinyl and like you say yeah. um there's so much backlog it's trying to get um the album out is it's just taking months and months and months so it, it it would be quite difficult i think uh like you say i'm releasing now i don't know when the projected time is where it's all going to even out so yeah probably, yeah and, probably like at the back end of next year probably yeah and with uh the current situation with uh <laughs> with lorry drivers and delivery guys and farewell <laughs> Mm. You'd probably be lucky to 2024 for anything new. Yeah. Well, um, like a, a good uh, a good time between albums, you know, like you know, like having collections of like Megadeth and stuff. It's like every two or three years. So, so yeah. So like 20, 22, 23 maybe is looking good. Yeah, it's uh, fingers crossed anyway that uh, that it. it evens itself out and uh we can all get back to purchasing uh <laughs> some good vinyl yeah. um with the tour inside of it um you say you're going on to a european tour is there any other plans to expand on that or are you just gonna um focus on europe uh is there anything for like the states or yeah, of course, we'd love to play the States with um, the, that'd be awesome, obviously. Um, we've only played Europe before, only a, a couple of dates over like a weekend or so. Introducing ourselves to like the Europe market for touring would be great for the, like, the next year or so. Yeah. Um, but the uh, States, until something comes up, then, you know, we're looking forward to it. Definitely with the, the next record, hopefully we'll be able to play there. Have you found it difficult with uh, visas and things like that for the European side of it? Well, because it was rescheduled, um, we're hoping it's not going to be rescheduled again. But um, it's next May, so hopefully everything's going to be fine for then. Yeah. You know, it's, it's all just unknown for now, really, that stuff. Yeah, definitely. Um, finally, um, are you going to be coming back to Wales? And if so, are you going to be going back to Fuel? Or are you going to go for a bigger venue, like maybe the Globe or the Tram Shed or something like that? Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, Fuel is a pretty small venue. Uh, yeah. There's, there's, the stage is kind of like cramped and there's like a weird wall with a, a lowered ceiling, which kind of gets in the way. So, yeah, yeah, those venues you mentioned, if, if they're cool, then, yeah, we'd, we'd like to play there again, yeah. I think start yeah. the start yeah. next year. We're we're thinking about maybe planning something for then. So, yeah. yeah, another good venue is the Patriot. Um, right. yeah, we, yeah, it's a it's a brilliant venue. And um, if you are, 
I'll send you an email with my socials on it and the actual owner of the Patriot. Brilliant venue. Uh, it's like a biker bar. All right, cool. It's uh, it's it's brilliant. So I'll give you more details and get in contact and uh, see what uh, you can arrange in the future. But it's 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 bigger than fuel. Very very much bigger. Yeah, that, that sounds good. Yeah, we're yeah. playing a Damnation Festival as well in in Leeds in November. All that's right. The, yeah, that's I, the I, next thing. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if um. I'd spoken to him about covering it because it I've had because of like yourselves with cancellations and postponements, mm. it, it's so hard to, because you like like yesterday I had um I covered uh hands off Gretel mm. and uh, yeah. the that that's something which was postponed from before. So I you you check in your diary and you're thinking, oh my God, I've got about three bloody concerts all in the, in the one week. And it's very, very stressful. But anyway, it's been brilliant talking to you. I'm sorry about the dog and all the other noise. It's cool. I've got a dog as well. <laughs> what's, what's his name? Oh, Ralph. He's destroying my, uh, my Captain America and uh, Ted. <laughs> I've, so, I've got a, no. I've got like a greyhound kind of mix. He's called Ripley, after that's Alien. A, that's Ralph, the terror. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he wants to attack my, uh, my uh, collectibles. But anyway, it's been brilliant speaking to you. Um, I will catch up with you again, uh, in a few months' time, and uh, we'll see how you get on with uh, the European tour, and let us know how things go. Yeah, awesome. Hopefully I'll see you at the next Cardiff show then. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I will be there for definite. Unless, awesome. uh, unless I die, uh, then uh, um, <laughs> I'll have to that. get my bloody ashes. But well, I will be come. All right, so I'll speak to you soon, all right? Take awesome. care. See you later. All right, no, mate.